Yeah, I just want a quick video on this Sonos Play 5 Gen 1. Um, got it off the eBay. So if you got one of these, just want to show you some problems that I ran into. Uh, this is not an opening up video, so I'm not going to open it up. But if you have opened yours up and defined problems, the inside, you want to see, this is the power supply slash amplifier board. Uh, I need to find something to point with here. Um, uh, two things that plagues this system is the caps, the capacitors. Some parts are missing. Long story on that, but I used this to fix two other ones. And I had to figure out what the problem was, but the caps swell up. Uh, I don't know how good the camera going to pick it up, but the caps, they swell and start leaking. Uh, this one also had like a power, the amplifiers. See the, the discoloration on the uh, board from the, the amp going bad. So this one was a bad amp, but a good power supply. So it powered up, but it only ran like one speaker. So, and once I opened it up, I seen the reason why it was only running one speaker. But I had two that didn't work. That white one I just showed in the beginning, that one didn't power up. And um, it took me a long time to figure out what the problem was. And um, what was happening is after the power supply, after it goes through, it hits the, it's this three, it's a coil. It's pretty much jumped over. Well, the center is ground. You have a 12 volt and a 24 volt. It just basically jumps over. Well, my 12 volt was going, was never going to 12. It was always jumping up and down, up and down. It was going like from six or seven to like 10, like 17, 17. I just kept on jumping. My 24 was going to like 12 to 15, 12, 15. It would never, never stay stable. So I just, I was like, wow. So I did, I did a lot of research <laughs> on basically on switch mode power supplies. There was nobody on the internet even showing this, you know, this problem at all. Everybody was like, oh, your Sonos don't work. Replace this fuse. Well, I got power all the way to here, so the fuse wasn't a problem. Uh, these caps wasn't bad. I pulled them off because I, if I could see, was it something else? Because they got this thing glued down so tough. So for that first problem I had where it kept on going on and off, on and off, on and off, it's a cap here that supplies the, uh, the switch mode power supply chip with its power. And I checked it there. And it was like up and down. So when I checked it, I checked, I forget which pin it is. Let me see if I can bring it up a little bit closer to you. But it's this chip right here. Um, I forgot which pin it was, but it was, the, I checked it with my multimeter. And it's supposed to be like a stable, something like 12 volts. Say it's 12 volts, or I think it's like, it could be 19 or 17, but it should be stable. It shouldn't be fluctuating on his input so i tested it and it was fluctuating it was going up and down up and down up and down a little bit on a basically on a, a switch mode power supply it gets like an initial kick to start and after that it's, it self runs it's got its own coil inside here that keeps itself running it generates its own its own power once it starts up but it needs to get power from like the beginning of the power supply first, but it ain't that much. It's a little bit. And that's what it was. I was seeing, I was seeing that it was getting the initial power, but it wasn't self regulating at that point or self turning on, keeping itself running. It was just get his first one drained down. So I see the voltage go up for a minute. That's when it first comes on drain down because it's not designed to keep on feeding it. It's just like a, a jump start. It just, once it gets jump started, it wouldn't start itself. It wouldn't keep itself running. So 
took me a while, I figured it out. Uh, right behind this tall capacitor, it should be a, that's going to be actually the actual switch, uh, transistor right here. Mind you, I took this one out, but it's a capacitor. It was a, not a capacitor. It was a resistor, a 10 arm resistor. It was again, right next to this tall resistor. It was a, a surface mount 10 arm resistor. If I can remember right, there's a resistor right here that if I, when I tested, I had like mega arms through it. It wouldn't send in the. It would let that was this is stay on once it started regular once it started kicking on that was sent it back to the chip to keep it on but that that resistor was bad so it never was regulated took it off of this one put it on to that white one you saw boom life's good it comes on it came on stable my, my 12 volts are stable 24 volts are stable everything became stable because it, it was making its own power at that point so that was my first problem so i said okay i'm confident i'm gonna buy a second one i got a black one it's off camera but i got a black one i was like well they all should be you know all the same there's no power it's going to probably be that same resistor yeah why did i think that because it was not that so <laughs> So I tested like every component, everything. What I was doing is I was test testing at the chip. I was not getting any voltage to the chip. So I'm like, it's got to be something that's stopping me from getting voltage in this area for this chip. Like, why am I not getting voltage? Checked everything, replaced the chip, put a different chip on another um, uh, isolate, isol mm, oscillating chip. I put another one on there. Didn't matter. It just wouldn't work. I didn't get any voltage. So I'm like, why did I change the chip? When I don't have any voltage, that's not, that make no sense. Stayed in this area forever to stay there. Could not figure it out. Come to find out. Remember I told you you needed that, that, that jump start? Well, it uses four resistors right here. I take it these resistors was to drop the voltage down before it gets over here for that initial start. It charges that capacitor, sends it over here. Well, I was reading mega ohms on two of the four resistors. And if you notice, two of these resistors are white because I flipped them over because I put them back where they were at. So you got two, one, you got two, hopefully I'm in a frame. I can barely see. I've got my camera above me. I don't have any way of seeing it, but there's two right here and it's a bolt and it's a two right there on the other side. Check those. Three of them like mega ohm totally. They was like, they were just off. There wasn't like, it wasn't obvious. Well, it kind of was obvious once I started testing it. I forgot what the values are. Like, I don't have a microscope. I just was testing it. If you start testing those two, like if you, so if you have no voltage to your chip, that's when you start going back here and see is those resistors good or not. You don't have to do, you don't even have to do that with power on. Just, um, you know, leave it off and test each resistor from one end to the next. And they should, matter of fact, I can tell you exactly what those resistors was because these are the bad resistors. I put them on here because I wanted to keep them. I was like, I'm a, they, they, were, they were placeholders. So let's see something. Let's see. I can tell you exactly what they were. Or not. That one seemed like it's open. Uh, maybe they were just open. No, uh, because this chip right here, this uh, one, it's not so. So I guess they supposed to be like 120 ohms. 120 ohms. And these was, was these reading? Maybe they were reading open. I thought it was reading mega ohms. But I, I guess, you know what? Because what it was, was one is it was in, in each. So one was here and one was here when I read it. So it might have been, uh, since it was in parallel, plus the caps. And everything because th like this one's going to be totally different because I have no capacitors or uh, nothing in line because I didn't it's a part board now it's not a I'm not trying to put this thing this one back together so but yeah they, they were they were gone and they so there was a hundred so we could at least we know that now we know we 120 arm um, surface mounts so that's what they were 119 I'm pretty sure it was 120 I take that back 120 kilo ohms it's a K at the end of that, sorry y'all, not 120 ohms, 100 so K ohms right there. 
So 120K is four of them. And that was these being open was now allowing me to get my voltage to my chip to even do the initial startup. So remember, I thought it was at 10 ohm. I tested that it was great on this that board. It's just it wasn't getting any voltage, but it starts from over here. I never was looking over here because I thought my problem would be over here. I don't know how I thought it was going to get its voltage over there. And then the voltage starts over here. I thought it was just magic. I thought it was just use magic to get it over there. I didn't think. But once again, it's multi-layered. And on the back, it doesn't even show like that that even goes there. Like you don't know. You can't see it from either side. Like you don't know that it goes over there at all because it's like I think it's at least three layer board. It's you don't know. So no schematics. You don't know. It's all like all oh, trial and error. But that's why I was like, I don't want to, you know, gatekeep all the information. I at least want to throw something out there, help somebody out that's probably run into this problem. And before, you know, you chuck it in the garbage, be like, I'm not even going to do it. But do be aware that if you do get one of these, it could be other problems. Like, it got nothing to do with the power supply section. It could be all your whole output section with bad caps. And it's, and it's not just here. It's throughout the board. And I got a, I got a, I got an idea of why it's like that. You put this inside of an enclosure. You got it running 24 seven because it doesn't have an off switch. 24 seven in an enclosure heating up. You're going to cause some problems. So if I was anybody with this type of speaker, if you want to like keep it like, oh, this is a great speaker to me, they're okay. They're not the greatest, but if you want to say it is great to you, but you want to keep it to prolong the life of it is get a, like a Wi-Fi switch, like the plugs that goes on your plug and you could turn it like use Google or something to turn that plug off. Just like a light switch. You can put like a light on it, have it turn it off. So it doesn't sit there and cook. I know we're like, well, I'm going to have instant music, but just tell Google to turn on or I'm Alexa, whoever you use to do you know turn your stuff on have them turn that switch on then connect to your speaker but guess what your speaker ain't sitting there baking for 24 hours or how many other days you waited before you played it because it's still everything in here is staying on it's ready to go it's all in ready mode and who wants that i mean you, you you're gonna definitely have going through capacitors i mean capacitors does go out over time Anyway, but I would say this, this is a prolong the life. I mean, to me, it's a bad design. You should at least put an off switch on there to turn it off. I mean, because all of this is running. And they're going to probably, they, you know, like they're going to probably come to me and say, no, we, you know, if once this goes into, you no, know, nobody uses music for 15 minutes or something like that, the whole output shuts down. Do you have any proof of that? Like, do you know? How do you know? You don't know. You're going by somebody's word. But if it's unplugged or disconnected, then you know it's not being used. So, well, that's my rant on this. I just wanted to not gatekeep anybody on some problems that you may have. The resistors here, if you have any no voltage, go onto your switch. And there's a resistor right, at, right next to this big tall resistor that um, controls the back feed. To, to maintain the, the chip to keep it going there's no schematics didn't find nothing online for it so i figured i'd just make a video about it just to help somebody out you know it took me a long time it took me a lot of parts taken off of this to figure it out and since i did i just want everybody else to know all right thanks for watching